A converged infrastructure addresses the problem of siloed deployments and IT sprawl by pooling and sharing IT resources. The idea is to create a pool of virtualized servers, storage, and networking capacity that is shared by multiple applications and lines of business. Now, there are multiple benefits for both technology adoption as well as business efficiency. This is not a new concept. My, my favorite success story for this approach is FlashStack, a CI solution from Cisco and Pure Storage. You see, the UCS convergence of compute and network coupled with the efficiency of all flash storage, it's a turnkey solution. Everything pre-configured, pre-cabled, and tested before it even ships to you. Well, FlashStack has been successfully deployed for over three years, and today we want to highlight how it continues to improve. We're going to be in the lab to take a closer look at one of the most valuable outcomes from this relationship, the Cisco Validated Designs, or CVDs. These things take a lot of work. Cisco engineers build out these scenarios and share every bit of best practice, design, wisdom, configuration, and so forth, so that you don't have to figure it out on your own. Well, Vish is going to walk us through live examples of the recently released CBD. But first up, we have a chance to ask some questions about all that has happened and what is also being planned for with executives from both Cisco and Pure right now. All right, hey guys, thank you so much for taking the time. So, Ziva with Cisco and Rajiv with Pure. We've been partnered for a while. FlashStack has done really well. You guys are continuing to invest and come out with new things. Uh, but just in case anyone's not familiar with it, let's start here. Uh, what is it that we're doing with Pure that's unique? Why should customers be interested in, in FlashStack? Sure, sure. And uh, thanks, Rob. And uh, if you look back at the partnership and the genesis of how we came together, uh, it was about three to four years ago. As we were um, really doing well in the converged business, the biggest thing that we saw in the market that Pure brought to market was the disruption in the storage industry. Mm -hmm. Just like how UCS really disrupted and, and brought together a fabric-based computing paradigm to the compute industry, Pure really brought this whole notion of an all-flash as a mainstream product. And that's where we started to actually work very closely together with Pure. Do you, you agree? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I'd like to dovetail into what uh, Shiva had just mentioned. Yeah. And you know, Cisco did a, bunch, uh, a lot of disruption. Uh, into the server space a few years ago, and they built a system that was scalable, upgradable with API first. And if you look at what Pure has done, uh, we did something very similar with Flash. We built a system that disrupted the storage space, um, API first, programmable, together, Flash stack, um, easy to scale, easy to upgrade, programmable. So interesting, so both the, I'd say both companies have been successful in kind of disaggregating certain functions so that they could come back together in a unique way. Flash stack is really about solving some infrastructure type things that every customer is going to have to do at some level, uh, but we've already done that for them. What is it we're doing today that we want customers to be aware of? So, you know, I, the ideal, the way that we have approached FlashTech is to create a foundational platform, an architecture, mm -hmm. that the data centers and customers can consume for a breadth of use cases. You know, one of the biggest challenges in the data center is every application or a variety of applications demand different things from the infrastructure. So it creates more silos, more architectural problems, management issues. Mm -hmm. But when you throw in flash and when you throw in high performance fabric, you know, 40 gig, 100 gig from Cisco, and of course high performance and simple and easy to deploy UCS servers, what we were able to create is a platform experience that IT can actually deploy um, a lot of different use cases without actually ho having to go through any type of modifications to their operational model, any modifications to their way they would operate, scale, and consume these technology as they go along. That's interesting because I think sometimes when you, th when you think about things that are pre-configured, you can kind of get this image, if, if you're not careful, of handcuffs. You know, yep. obviously that's not what you're providing here, but what you're saying is just the opposite. What you're saying is there's a level of modularity and there's a very much a level of shaping it to the customer applications. Now we produce some documentation to help customers get started uh, with this, even though things are coming pre-configured, the whole kimono is open and, and being done. Has that, what's the, it's the CVD, the Cisco course, um, yeah. uh, Validated Designs. Um, what is your opinion of how well those fit in terms of when your customers are looking at FlashStack and what Pure brings to it? They love it. Um, yeah. And I'd like to thank Shiva and the uh, whole UCS team, um, Cisco, uh, for doing those uh, CVDs because I know CVDs are not easy to develop. They take a lot of time, uh, time and people resources. Um, so we were fortunate enough to have multiple CVDs uh, that uh, Cisco has uh, provided for FlashStack. And if you look at most of the applications that uh, initially were deployed on the FlashStack are primarily virtualization, VDI, 
databases, enterprise applications like SAP and Epic in the healthcare space. Um, so it's not just that these applications are being deployed in silos. You can actually mix all of these applications in a single flash stack a pod, if you will. Wow. And the reason for being able to do that is the scale that Cisco provides, as well as flash uh, giving you performance that you need for all these applications mixed together. Well, that's a great reminder, because I, I remember, obviously, that's the way we always treated applications. One application per server, you know, and this is the way that, this is the way you followed the directions from the application maker as well. Obviously, we start mixing this stuff together so it can be more efficient. It's the design and the architecture that's making that possible so that one application cannot rob from another. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys have designed it so that they can do that. Yeah, it's all about the quality okay. of service and the way we can actually segregate pieces of a unified architecture in a more API-driven, programmable fashion, if you will. So what's next for FlashStack? Because the partnership's about two to three, four years old even? I mean, you've been successful. Well, you know, the customer started first, and then we obviously realized the, the strength and the power of the unified architecture, and we, we jumped in and, and really did a lot of work around it. Uh, but if you look at where we are going next, it's truly really where the industry is going as well. If you look at the big innovations that are happening, you know, people are obviously, there is a huge motion around, around, around cloud. I mean, a lot of mm. work around cloud. What can we do? And what cloud does and provide beyond other things is simplicity and ease of, of consuming things. Um, that's one piece that we are absolutely bringing to FlashTag as we are looking at bringing a, a seamless experience in the management and operation. And it centers around one of the key technologies that we have brought together called the Cisco InnerSight, which is a UCS cloud-based management platform. And by integrating the storage connectors from that is developed by Pure into this model, we just were demoing a, a flash tag managed by Cisco InnerSight as a proof of concept at Cisco Live. It was a fantastic demo, obviously great work from their team to work with us. Oh, nice. And they were the first to demo a, a integrated experience with Cisco InnerSight. And, and that's one major vector, if you will. The other area that is uh, quite hot and quite great in today's market is the AI ML market. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, they have announced a great solution on AI ML that, uh, that's, that's available as well, and then we have just launched a brand new platform on the UCS family called the UCS um, the C4 AD ML. Absolutely. Now, um, the, the promise of these two together is our flash tech customers will be able to consume the 480 ML as a platform underneath a flash stack architecture. Pretty yeah. much what they have done all along, now they get AI ML capabilities. I don't know why you would do it without it. Uh, yes, yeah. she was uh, mentioned the cloud, yep. and uh, you know we're doing a lot of things in the cloud, which, um, and cloud, when you talk about cloud, there's uh, this association that comes about with containers. So we've actually built solution for containers, which we call the Pure Service Orchestrator. Okay. And then I know Cisco has done a lot of work, so look to us to actually come up with joint solutions um, in container ecosystems. Uh, we are working close together on that. Um, uh, she've already mentioned InnerSight and management through the public cloud. Uh -huh. um, that's, that's another vector. And the third piece that people, when you talk about cloud, think about consumption models. Uh, the business of how you buy mm. uh, resources in the okay. cloud, right? So we are also offering some innovative ways of buying uh, the infrastructure, if you will. So oh, these nice. are all happening, and in addition, there are other new technologies that we're jointly working on with NVMe over Fabric. Uh, look for us to come up with solutions in that space. Okay. Um, and then the one thing I do want to highlight is that we recently um, built uh, a CVD that is centered around ACI and multiple pods with Perfect. FlashStack uh, for high availability. We are extending that to build business continuity across sites uh, in an active-active access uh, with active-active access capabilities. Um, Excellent. The, the other big thing that we are also taking advantage of is their innovation around their next generation Flash platform called the Flash Blade. It okay. is built around uh, mainly on these, these file object type of workloads, uh, greatly suited for analytics and other use cases, combined with the need to manage so much of data, the larger fabric, the faster fabric, 100 gigs, and, and larger fabric, fa fiber channel technologies. That, again, builds another turnkey platform for another set of analytics type of use cases. But mind you, both these architectures we're talking about, both these platform, we bring it together for the same operational model. Yeah. Flash well, tag. Well, and that's what I love. So customers are basically pushing 
the innovation, Correct. and we're just kind of meeting them where they are. Because mm -hmm. um, I know Pure's done a lot of things. You had to create stuff before the customers were ready for them. Same for UCS. Uh, and, but now we're at this part where people are going, yeah, let's go faster, let's go faster, but I want to do it reliably. I want to do it with security. The CVDs are leading the way for doing it properly. You guys have shrink-wrapped and made it very easy to take advantage of it. Just turn on that compute. And you know the number of yeah. partners we have trained who can actually deliver right it to point. you in your own region. I mean, absolutely, that, that's the scale for us. That's the strength of the architecture. Many people are able to repeat and, and, and provide you the, the simplification you know, in, a, in a rapid fashion. And then support, right? Uh, Cisco can provide a single point of support. We have channel partners who can do level one and level two support for the entire I'm infrastructure. I'm glad you brought that up, because that's, yeah. that's a good point. So one call, TAC is going to own it. Yeah. If there is anything that needs to go on in the background, we'll take care of it for you uh, and make it seamless. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. I think I'm going to get a demonstration of, uh, I think, what you just talked about with the CVD. We'll find out. Thank you. We'll thank talk you. to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. This story going. This is interesting stuff. All right. So, Vish. Hello. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. So, I, I love the CVDs. I don't know if you heard me saying that earlier. Yeah. I love what we do. A lot of great detail. Um, but sometimes I don't think anyone fully appreciates how much we can do. Did you, you picked one out that you thought would be good for us we, we did, we did. So uh, one of the, I mean, we have a portfolio of solutions as part of our uh, uh, flash track engagement with Pure. Uh, the one I want to uh, double click on today is on the business continuity solution that we have built, ah, okay. uh, leveraging uh, various uh, products and technologies within Cisco's portfolio as well as uh, Pure's uh, portfolio. Oh, that sounds a set perfect. of features and the capability that I would like to I'll walk, uh, walk us through. And so tonight. this really, I believe this one's the one that we have, not only of course UCS, uh, you know, Cisco and Pure, and then we've also got ACI Anywhere. So that's correct, that's correct. So we, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. It's, a, it's a complete stack, uh, compute, network, storage, as well as uh, cloud-based management and monitoring uh, within this okay. portfolio. And the idea here is that we will, we customers, one of the big things for our customers is uh, business continuity. Oh, they yeah. want to make sure that their uh, applications run optimally and uh, there is minimal downtime, if you will, if something were to happen or they are ramping up their business for seasonality or additional uh, capacity for compute or storage. Okay. So when the traditional ways of doing it, uh, there is some uh, maintenance in window involved, the additional provisioning involved. However, with UCS, with ACI Anywhere, as well as pure storage, uh, active cluster capability, we're able to set this up once, and we can move things around, uh, scale up and down as we uh, go. Without having to pay attention to a maintenance window. Without having to wow. worry about a maintenance window, okay. and move things around between sites, between parts, and uh, let things uh, slide, let things go smoothly. Okay, well show, show us how All that right. works. So, uh, as I said, we are looking at business continuity with flash tag. Right. We're leveraging Cisco InterSight for management, cloud-based management, uh, ACI Anywhere for uh, comprehensive centralized uh, network management across multiple sites. And then we have using uh, Pure's active cluster capability for uh, replication of data between sites, okay. active and uh, uh, active active sites on two different uh, locations. Okay. So that way when things were have to move between sites, there's no uh, heavy lift or forklift of storage. It just uh, quickly move the uh, workloads application but from one site to the other and you're off your, off okay. your. As you can uh, see here, you uh, you recognize the UCS compute yep, piece absolutely. on the two sides here. Uh, you, what we're showing here is so it's matching the two on sides. Both sides. Exactly, okay. matching on two sides. Then we have the pure storage arrays. Okay. And then we have the connectivity using ACI uh, to manage the network configuration across the both sides. Okay. Uh, Cisco InterSight, this is our cloud based management capability across sites, across parts. Uh, easy to uh, visualize, easy to monitor, and easy to configure as customers go along. And, and not to get off the subject, but every UCS customer should be at least signing up with InterSight because there's a lot, of, a lot of benefit to the data sharing. There is, yeah? there is. Yeah. Okay. So proactive uh, support, it proactive fixes. It didn't cost anything fixes, just to get started with And uh, to get started, you're absolutely right. Uh, so there is this base edition and ed essential editions. So base edition is like you was mentioning, it's free of cost. Uh, if you want added capabilities, you would go to okay. the essential edition and go get uh, additional value out okay, of this. Okay, but easy to get started. Like absolutely, that. absolutely, okay. yeah. This is the virtual uh, infrastructure, this is a virtual infrastructure. What we are seeing is a vCenter console. Oh, okay. Uh, so we are, uh, I'm going to uh, show what is the setup, high level setup, and the pieces that build into it, the APIC, uh, ACI APIC piece a little bit. Okay. The InSight uh, uh, screens, and the pure active, set active cluster setup. Then I'll launch some uh, uh, IO to see what's happening 
and do a V oh, motion we can actually see the flow. Live. Oh, exactly. you're going to do a V motion. V motion okay. quick live and then show how the uh, IO pattern changes, goes from site A to site B. You're going to fail it? Uh, that's the idea. Okay, excellent. All right. You're going to build something and then make it fail. Uh, yeah, I like exactly, it. Okay. exactly. That's right. right, that's right. As you can see here, the v, v, I set up a few things already uh, yeah, so no, that no, for you. in the interest of time. Uh, we have these two sets of virtual machines with uh, each set having four virtual machines. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start with I.O. on the first I.O. meter group. Uh, then I'll show how the uh, I.O. pattern is happening on the pod. Then do a failover okay. and then see, the, see that uh, pattern changing, the I.O. pattern changing. So where will we see the change happening? Uh, that's right. I'll, that's okay. that, good. So that's what I'll go to next. So this is the uh, vCenter view. So before I go into the vMotion itself, let me run a quick uh, uh, view of APIC, how the setup is. Oh, that's good enough. So okay. uh, I'm not going to go into uh, all these details here. So main thing I want to show is the uh, fabric, the how it's connected, and the topology of what we have. Okay. Uh, so as you see here, we have two pods here. We have pod 1 and pod 11 named. Mm -hmm. So these are the two remote sites. Pod 1 is on site A and pod ah, 11 okay. is in site 2. That's like its sister. Uh, sister, okay. yeah, 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 something like okay. that. Okay. And this, this is the uh, set of components that we have within the, each of these um, sites. So we have the two IPN uh, switches, uh, Nexus uh, 7000s, okay. uh, two in, on each side. And these are the two pods. In each of these pods, we have, as you see, a number of spines and a number of leaf nodes. And uh, the virtual machines that we were seeing earlier, they are currently running on pod one. Okay. Yeah. So and let me, maybe I'll just uh, click to a uh, pod here just to see uh, show how the number of uh, spines and leaves that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, so this is the kind of high level setup we have on the APIC side. Okay. So on InterSide, so as, you, as many of our uh, viewers know, InterSide is the centralized management right. console for all the domains that you would like to have. And in this case, right now too, for uh, simplicity, I only uh, limited the view to just the two parts or two domains that we have, one on the active side and the other other on the secondary side. So it, this gives you a high level dashboard of the health of the systems, the inventory, and the number of hosts and VMs we have. Okay. So then the next piece I want to go to is the uh, two pure storage arrays that I was uh, referring to earlier. So this is the storage component of the uh, oh, setup. Nice. Okay. So these are the two, uh, as, you can, as, you note, as you might have noticed, all of our uh, management is done uh, through web-based UIs. Uh, same thing with pure storage as well. So the two screens you see, one is the one is from site one, site A. The other one is from site B. Okay. And this is the dashboard we are seeing. And right now, it's okay. giving a yeah. quick view of what is the capacity available, what are some of the metrics from a latency, IOPS, bandwidth, and so on. And same thing on this side. Right. So as you see here, there is uh, some amount of data happening, some yeah. amount of activity happening. And let me launch the iometer load and go from there. So right now we, are, we already started it. As you see here, there's some activity going on. And here, one thing to notice, if we go back to the console here, the, this line you see the uh, blue one is the read IOPS. Mm -hmm. the, the purple one is the mirrored right IOPS. Okay. And the right IOPS is the orange one, which is kind of zero. So not much is happening on this side. So now, let me go to vCenter and do the vMotion like I was uh, mentioning earlier, and uh, we can see what's happening. So these are the four, uh, four VMs I want to start with. It's coming up. Let me select all four. Let me migrate. Now let me, uh, in I'll initiate the migration through vMotion. Now we uh, tried, tested, validated, we are good. So let me click the different site. So right now, as I said, it's uh, uh, the current load is on uh, site A. Right. We'll uh, move, move over to over. site two. Network is the default. We are not changing anything there. Policy high priority. We want to see it right away. And now we're actually initiating a vMotion versus this is not a failure that's initiating it. Right, right. So okay. we are instead of I mean uh, instead of pulling a plug on the uh, server, but it's the right same now, thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a okay. similar similar impact. Good uh, good call out there. So I initiated the uh, vMotion there. As you see here, the read has gone oh, down yeah. <laughs> on site 
P, and, and it was spiked up on site B. Because this is the working site now. This is the working site, These exactly. These two stay mirrored except for how they're being accessed. Exactly. So okay. since I uh, migrated the virtual machines from site A to site B, all the reads are happening on site B. The one thing to notice is that the writes are not changing. Why? Because these two sites are replicated. It's an online, uh, real-time replication is happening. So, you, so irrespective of where you write it, okay. the activity will show up on both sides because it's active re replication. Okay. So this is the value we bring with uh, FlashTag by combining the, all the technologies that we bring to the table. Uh, so it, it reduces any downtime. It uh, increases the continuity and efficiency for our uh, customers. Yeah, now I've, I've been a big fan. I don't, honestly don't read them all the way to the end. Sure. So if there's a twist coming, I, I will have missed it. But in the CVDs, what I love is not only has it been a, a smart set of engineers from both companies, yep. uh, from Cisco and Pure, are looking at this and going, we're figuring this out ahead of time. This is kind of moving into a new area for FlashStack in terms of doing multiple sites that and ACI correct. anywhere that and such. That's all new. Uh, uh, that's, right? that's a good point. So this, we are uh, showcasing multiple new capabilities across the portfolio. With ACI, ACI Anywhere uh, feature was introduced recently. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Pure's uh, active cluster capability. That's also fairly new. So we're bringing best of the breed technologies as well as capabilities for our customers as part of this. Uh, yeah, I love that. Normally that would design. be a lot of stuff to kind of figure out. Absolutely. How is that going to actually work when you've got that many different kind of moving parts, so to speak, to make sure it's going to work correctly? You guys have already published it. It's uh, proven on there. It is, yes. So a flash stack authorized reseller would be able to set this up and, and get you the hardware, everything that you need, and then CVDs are always there as a guide as well to make sure you understand everything exactly, that's happening. Exactly, that's, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Well, Vish, we're, thank we're you. We're excited yeah. for our customers, and I'm happy to uh, share this with our, uh, with our audience today. No, that's good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Guys, if this was interesting, well, I know it was interesting, so you need to keep looking for the CVDs. There's a lot more. There's stuff on Oracle, uh, very application-oriented, whatever kind of database stuff you're trying to work through. There's no reason why there's not already a CVD that can help you kind of, uh, it's already paved that road for you, if you go, if you will. All of them are easily found at flashstack.com, so be sure and check that out for more information there, including uh, this one here, which was in the one on ACI Anywhere and... Pure Active Cluster. Pure Active Cluster. That's, That's right. the one you need to look for. So take a look for that CVD. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon.